In short, after today, there's too much optimism. now. We haven't seen any olive branches ahead of this meeting, and I, we didn't see it company uh, be told that it's okay to do more business in China or be able to go it alone like an American Express. We didn't see that. I do expect our stock market to be hammered if nothing positive comes off this G20 meeting. And I'm now telling you that I think, just me, not most pundits, think that the most likely outcome is nothing happens. If that's the case, which stocks are likely to get slammed after we saw what happened today so that you know what a disappointing G20 meeting would be? Well, first is the semiconductors. When Broadcom reported last week, they told us there could be a massive shortfall because the president blacklisted one of their biggest customers, Huawei. Broadcom stock has now rebounded almost back to where it was before the disappointment. Extraordinary. Micron's struggling back up. Commodity semis are always in demand in China. Xilinx, the king of Chinese 5G, is roaring back. Meanwhile, Lamb Research surged higher today in spite of a recent downgrade. Skyworks Solutions, Corva, Western Digital, all rallied. I think all these stocks will get hit, if not hit hard, if there is no deal. The House of Pain. And to the G20. Second. Apple. Now, you know my stance on Apple. We, we, we got to own it. I, and, boy, has that been right? I mean, come on. The stock's going to bound one from 140 all the way up to the 190s. But uh, after this recent run, I think the stock is still way too cheap. The uh, Let's say you have to expect it to get hit if the president rolls out another round of tariffs. And he wrongly doesn't give them an exception. Yes, I am calling for an Apple exception to the next round of tariffs. Third, the industrials. These are very tricky. Right now, there are two sets of industrials that are roaring. you got the capital goods companies that Wall Street views as being dependent on China, although maybe they've been punished enough. And then you've got the ones that have rallied enough today that they're vulnerable again. I think Caterpillar and Boeing fall in the first category. Cats become much, much more of a service-oriented company than most people realize. Boeing's all about the future of the 737 MAX. I think both stocks have real cattle ahead, so I wouldn't sweat only. As a matter of fact, I like them both here. But then there are the companies that really need China because it accounts for a huge percentage of what growth they have. Companies like Emerson, 3M, that stock was up today. United Technologies, actually, these were all up. Um, I think the first two, uh, Emerson, 3M, I think they might miss their numbers if there's no deal. As for United Technologies, even if the estimates are okay, this is a complicated merger that's got going with Raytheon plus a breakup story. I bet that stock will be under pressure until we have some resolution with the Chinese. Fourth, the transports. These stocks have been crushed by the trade war, but FedEx bounced today. The rails are making a comeback. Uh, more on that later when we speak to uh, the CEO of Union Pacific. Uh, to me, these are rough stocks uh, because if the president hits China with more tariffs, they go lower. Finally, there's wind resorts in Las Vegas Sands. Both get walloped if there's no deal. That makes their Macau business shaky. Now, I know that on a day like today, nobody wants to hear any of that negative stuff I just told you. I mean, there's tremendous optimism. But I think I got to present a realist view out here on Mad Money. I think it may prove to be a mistake, given the poor record of the Chinese in keeping promises and the lack of trust Trump has shown for his good friend, Xi. Remember, he said, she said. The bottom line, you need to remember there's one situation that nobody who owns stocks wants to see. If Fed Chief Jay Powell chooses to be less cautious, less vigilant about stopping a slowdown because of a Trump's latest tweet, and there's no deal at the G20 summit. It's a real possibility, and you can't afford to pretend otherwise, especially after today's magnificent run. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.